I hope you guys are all doing quite well. Uh, today I'm pretty excited to be kicking off this video because this has got to be one of my all-time favorite things to do in coffee, which is to simply drink coffee. It's to taste coffee. It's to absolutely cover my taste buds with the flavor of coffee, with the nuances and the complexities of coffee and the good and the bad, the moldy and the spectacular. We're talking about cupping coffees, which is in other words, another way of saying it's we're tasting coffees. The Specialty Coffee Association has simply just created this so that we can all have a common way of tasting coffees. For those of you guys who are wondering like, why do we have to have a specific procedure and process when we're tasting coffees? Can't we just make a drip coffee of it? Can't we just make an espresso shot? And to a certain extent I can say, yeah, you can actually simply just go and brew a specific coffee and know what it tastes like. But when you're brewing coffee, there's a lot of all kinds of variables involved. Water temperature, the kind of water you're using, uh, the grind size, the the brew method, different brew methods are gonna pull out different characteristics and qualities of coffee. And that's the beautiful thing about cupping coffees. It takes away a lot of the complex variables that you can get into brewing and simply strips it down to pouring water over grounds and extracting the flavor of the coffee, the characteristics of the coffee. You'll need a, either a cupping bowl or some kind of small bowl. Uh, you don't want anything too big, but you also don't want anything too small, but the size of kind of like a cappuccino, like an eight ounce bowl, that leads me to saying, you're probably gonna need, if you're cupping one coffee, two bowls for each coffee, and we have one bowl, that we use as pretty much uh, a rinser. So after you taste the coffee out of the bowl, you go ahead and put your spoon into the bowl of hot water. This just holds hot water to sanitize uh, this spoon, which I absolutely love this spoon. And that gets me to the second thing. You can use any spoon, a teaspoon, a tablespoon, anything that just has, um, has some kind of bowl shape to it so that you can actually get something. If it's a little bit of a flatter spoon, it's gonna be a little more difficult to uh, to scoop up some, some coffee into your spoon to slurp. You're also going to need some coffee. I have some freshly ground coffee in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna wanna ground it, grind it not too fine and not too coarse, probably like a medium, uh, medium coarseness. If you're familiar with doing pour overs, you can just do a pour over grind. I think that's gonna do well until you tailor it to kind of your preference and your taste. But whatever you go with, something that we've done is we found our golden spot of grinding size and we just keep doing that every single time and we just don't dare to adjust it because it's gonna change our results and we kinda wanna keep things as consistent as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and Hit this to start and we can actually jump right into our cupping and kind of talk through the basics of cupping coffee. Let's do this. It sounds like a freaking rocket ship out there just boiling some, some tasty water. So while we're waiting for the water to finish boiling, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some coffee into these bowls. So I'm gonna use a a scale. This helps us kind of keep our cuppings consistent from one cupping to another. And we're dosing out about 12 grams of coffee per cupping. And this is a part of the cupping that you can go ahead and give your coffee a smell. Give, it's called, these are called dry smells. So get it all in there. Get all this, all the tasty, all the juicy smells in there. The good thing about these bowls is that they're all kind of the same size. So when we put 12 grams of coffee in here, we just fill them up to the very brim. Uh, before you go on, you're gonna go ahead and grab your phone or grab a timer and you wanna time your cuppings. Start the timer as soon as the water hits the, the coffee grounds. So let's do this. So I'm looking at about 230 grams of water to 12 grams of coffee. Make sure you get all the grounds. You might see some clumping of grounds 
in the bowl, you wanna get them all saturated, all of them. It's also recommended to do like a one to 18. So if you're somewhere in the ballpark right there, it's gonna do quite fine for your cupping. Mmm, so pretty. And so uh, we're looking at our timer. We're approaching about four minutes. So here what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna break the crust that has stacked up at the top brim. That's just a bunch of grounds that are floating at the top. You have to get your nose right up in there because as soon as you break, there's gonna be some delicious, tasty aromas that you wanna be able to catch to further evaluate your cup. Before we do that though, we'll go ahead and take this empty bowl and fill it with some water so that it's ready to be used to sanitize the spoon that you're using to break the crust. So let's get right into this. After you take in those aromas, put that spoon right back in there. What you'll notice is there's a thin layer of light brown uh, foam or like lighter grounds that are floating at the top still. You're gonna want to take those off because in a couple minutes here, we're gonna go ahead and start sipping and tasting the coffee. And you don't want those grounds in your mouth, on your palate, because it's just, just not gonna be fun. Who wants, who, who wants grounds in their cup? I mean, if you do, leave them, go ahead and leave them on there if you, if you do, that's, that is totally fine, but I don't. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and wait until about the 10, 11 minute mark. That's about when the coffee starts to cool down and uh, is actually drinkable. If it's too hot, it's not gonna be a very pleasing experience. You're gonna burn your tongue, burn your mouth, burn something in there that you don't actually want to be burning. So we're coming up at about a little past 10 minutes. Go ahead and dip your spoon right back into your hot water bowl. And all you're gonna wanna do is get, scoop up a little bit of coffee in your spoon and give it a sip. If you really wanna go out of the way, go ahead and give it a good slurp. Um, that sprays the coffee all over your palate and gives some uh, air circulation in your mouth so you can actually, maybe hopefully it'll help you pick up some things um, that are in the coffee. So let's get right into it. So as time progresses on your timer, uh, you're, you're going to notice that some of these coffees are changing uh, flavor. Are, there's more intriguing things coming out out of the flavor profile, the characteristics. And as it cools, your coffee is going to be changing quite drastically. So go ahead and just keep keep coming back to the same bowls um, and giving them some slurping, some tasting. So that's kind of all there is to tasting coffees, cupping coffees. There's a little bit more of the complex side, which will actually make a different video for cupping coffees. That's more, a little bit more in depth, a little bit more complex. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me on this cupping. Hopefully this was insightful. Hopefully this was helpful in, in, in some way. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. The comment section below is to have, for us to have a conversation. I wanna answer some questions. Uh, maybe we can share some of our experiences and hope you guys have a wonderful, spectacular day. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.